Okay, so we're going to talk about the participles of the three athematic verbs, te mm -hmm. me, his te me, and dido me. The best way to, I, I think Belisi and I agreed, we were just chatting about this, that that given what you we already taught you, you can probably guess immediately any one when you see one. But the simplest way to approach this is to look on page 395 in the book at the aorist participles, okay, which are dus, dus a don, okay, thes, thes a then, and stas, stas a stan. Um, dus, dus a don, thes, thes a then, and stas, stas a stan. Superplex, yep. Yeah. And stas, stas a stan. So remembering that how these work, okay, that's the that's the aorist participle because it's not reduplicated, okay? Um, if you memorize these three, these nine forms, you'll have the whole system, okay? Because mm -hmm. if you want to make the, that's the aorist participle, you want to make the imperfective aspect or the present participle, you just put di in front of it. It's the deuce, the deuce, the don. Tith, the ace, the ace, the then. He stas, he stas, he stas. As easy as that. Um, it, and um, to make the perfect ones, you're going to do de. Uh, well, something else is going to happen there, but you'll recognize them when you see them, okay? But there's going to be a, a re reduplication with an e, okay? Um, I don't think there's anything that's de do cos and works with the principal part. Heste, hestos is the only one that's tricky. Let's look at that for a second. For the perfect participles of these verbs, it's hestos, hestosa, hestos, okay? So, um, hestos circumflex over the omega and hestosa and hestos with an omicron. Okay. With not not an alpha but an omicron there. Oh sorry. My bad. Okay. Hestos is the neuter non verb accusative. And then uh, um, hestotos is the genitive hestosis and hestotos and so forth. Otos with an omega and not an oh, omicron. Oh, my bad. <laughs> jeez. So, so there's you. Get, you have your reduplication with an with an e so from sesto, and so even then there's a os we a os is what you would expect, but it's os osa os. So that's that's what's different about this particular form. But I, I, again, I think that if you keep their principles in mind, you'll be fine. The same thing goes for the middle participles. Okay, so if we give them to you the aorist middle ones. We got dominos. Uh, on, eh, on rather, um, staminos, eh, on, and um, feminos. Oh, that's what you're saying. Yep. The endings. <laughs> yep. And eh, on. Okay. Yep. Feminos. So, oh. and then the so those are the aorist forms, and then the the so-called present participle is going to be didominos, his dominos, and Tithemenos, okay? No, no serious difficulties there, okay? Sorry, having technical difficulties. <laughs> How do I unselect? There it goes. All right. Yeah. Sorry. Excellent. Well done. <laughs> All right, so so that's the participles of the uh, thematic verbs. Um, the, the this lesson also introduces you to um, a really interesting development from the athematic verbs. There's one class of athematic verbs that's actually a living category. In other words, what you've done is you've taken, they've been regularized, if you will. Um, so some of the major irregularities have been have been uh, analogized out of them or removed mm -hmm. from them. The standard verb is the verb deik, D-E-I-K, nu me. Okay, let's divide it up in that way. Deik, nu, and then me, okay? So effectively, the, the, the root there is deik. It's the same as the, if you know Latin, as the root of deco, to speak, which actually means to point at and stuff like that in <laughs> Greek. This, this root verb means point in Greek, not speak. Um, but um, that said, what happens is that you, there are a bazillion verbs in Greek with this nume suffix, and you can see there's no thematic vowel between the nu and the me, right? So that's the present. Um, 
there's no uh, what what you've removed from these new new category or living category of athematic verbs is the vowel changes in the stem. So there's no other form of the present in the present stem or in the aorist of deik with a different vowel or something like that. The aorist of this verb is edeksa, just a regular old sa aorist. The future is deikso, and and the perfect is dedecha and stuff like that. So. It's all been regularized. Everything, ex is, in other words, is like a regular verb, except for the present system, the imperfective aspect. So you've got deknu me, deknu, deknu se. Okay, the endings that we're used to from now, getting used to now from the uh, thematic verbs. Deknu man, deknu te, deknu ase. That's the third person plural. And then the imperfect, you have a deknu, a deknu se, deknu, a deknu man, a deknu te. And then the third person plural. A deg new son. You can see these forms on, in the book on page 399. In the middle forms, they're even more regular than the regular verbs because, again, you have no contraction in the second person forms. So it's deg new sai is you point out for right. yourself, and a deg new saw is you were pointing out for yourself. Okay? So these forms are really easy to, to understand and to identify. There's no thematic vowel between the stem and the ending, and it has the funny endings, um, but just in the present and the imperfect forms, okay? Um, and they, they represent a very large class in Greek, and we'll learn more about them. So the book lays out for you the imperative forms, the participial forms, there are no surprises, okay? I just look these over, and you should be fine, okay?